Hi everyone, it's Professor Pemberton. In this video we're going to finish up our discussion on geometric sequences. So if you remember from the previous video, we talked about how to find the common ratio and write terms for a geometric sequence and also the formula for the general term. But we haven't talked about the formula for the sum of the first n terms of a geometric sequence and we're going to also talk about the annuities. So let's look at the sum of the first n terms of a geometric sequence. The sum of the first n terms, if your sequence is geometric, is also denoted capital S sub n. So remember, this has the same notation as the sums involving arithmetic sequences, and it's still called an nth partial sum. So the partial sum is adding up the terms of a geometric sequence. So the first term of a geometric sequence would be a sub 1. The second term we saw in the previous video was a sub 1 times r. The third term would be a sub 1 times r squared. And the nth term was the first term, a sub 1, times the common ratio r to the n minus 1 power. So the sum of the nth partial sum in a geometric sequence is simple to find using the common ratio between the terms. So what we can do is take this partial sum, capital S sub n, and multiply every single term by r as follows. r times this entire partial sum, a sub 1 plus a sub 1r plus a sub 1r squared plus a sub 1r cubed plus dot 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 all the way to the last term, a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1. We're going to multiply each term by r and we're going to come up with a sub 1r plus a sub 1r times r gives us r squared, plus a sub 1r cubed, plus a sub 1r to the fourth, plus dot dot dot, and then the last term would be a sub 1r to the nth power. Well now, we have r times s sub n gave us this partial sum. We're going to take s sub n and r times s sub n and subtract the two sequences as follows. So we're going to take s sub n and subtract r times s sub n. So notice that there's an s sub n in common, so you can factor that out, and it's 1 subtract r. But on the other hand, s sub n was the original partial sum, so it's a sub 1 plus a sub 1r plus a sub 1r squared plus dot 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 times a sub 1r to the n minus 1, and we are subtracting our answer we got after multiplying by r. So we're subtracting a sub 1r plus a sub 1r squared plus a sub 1r cubed plus dot 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 all the way to a sub 1r to the nth power. So now if you subtract, keep in mind if you subtract this entire sum it's actually subtracting each term. So a sub 1, there are no other a sub 1's by themselves, but a sub 1r Subtract a sub 1r. These two terms will cancel each other out. a sub 1r squared. Subtract a sub 1r squared. So those also cancel out. And again, all the terms will cancel out. a sub 1r to the n minus 1 will also cancel out because it's the one that's right before a sub 1r to the nth power. So that term will cancel out. a sub 1r cubed will also cancel out. All the terms will cancel out except a sub 1 and minus a sub 1 r to the nth power. So let's put everything together. We have on one hand that s sub n times 1 minus r is equal to a sub 1 minus a sub 1 r to the n. You can factor out a sub 1 and you'll have 1 subtract r to the nth power. Now we want a formula to be able to calculate the partial sum s sub n. So now divide both sides by 1 minus r and you come up with a formula for s sub n. It's the first term a sub 1 times 1 minus r, the common ratio, to the nth power and then divide by 1 subtract r, again the common ratio. And this is the sum of the first n terms in a geometric sequence. So we're going to use this formula to calculate the sum of the first n terms of a geometric sequence. 
All right, so the formula again is capital S of N gives us the sum of the first N terms of a geometric sequence, and it's the first term needs to be known, and it's times one minus R to the nth power, so you need to know what the common ratio is, and then you divide by one minus the common ratio. So A sub one is the first term, and the R is the common ratio, and notice in the formula that the common ratio cannot be one, otherwise you'll be, you'll be dividing by zero. So therefore, if you want to find out the sum of the terms in a geometric sequence, you need to know the first term, and you need to know the common ratio, and you need to know how many terms you're adding. So let's try example five. We're going to find the sum of the first 18 terms in these two geometric sequences. So number one, the geometric sequence is 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, and so on. So notice that the, this sequence is a geometric sequence because the common ratio is 2. So any two terms that you choose, consecutive terms, and you divide them, so like 32 divided by 16, it's 2. So the common ratio is 2, so that's one piece that we need to be able to find out the partial sum. We also need the first term, which is also 2. And we need to know how many terms we're going to add. We need to add 18 terms. Okay, so now let's find out the partial sum. Capital S of N is equal to the first term times 1 minus R to the N power, and then divide by 1 subtract R. So let's substitute everything in. S sub 18 for the sum of the first 18 terms would be the first term is 2 times 1 minus the, the common ratio, 2, to the 18th power for the N, and then divide by 1 subtract the common ratio again, which is 2. So let's do a little bit of simplifying. It's 2 times 1 subtract 2 to the 18th power is 262,144. And then the denominator is just simply negative 1. Well, if you calculate this in a calculator, you'll have 524,286 is the partial sum when you add up the first 18 terms of this geometric sequence. Okay, let's try it on a different sequence this time. Number 2. The sequence is 1, then a half, then a fourth, then an eighth, then a sixteenth, and so on. So this is also a geometric sequence because the common ratio can be found to be the same for any two consecutive terms that you choose. So R is equal to, let's try to avoid the fractions, let's choose the first two terms. If you take one half, the new term, and divide by the preceding term, it's 1, so you get 1 half. And we also need to know the first term. The first term is a sub 1 equals 1, so that's nice. So let's go back to the formula. The sum of the first n terms is a sub 1 times 1 minus r to the n, and divide by 1 minus r. We need to find out the sum of the first 18 terms. So it's the first term, which is 1, times 1 minus a half, make sure that goes in parentheses, because you would enter this in the calculator later, to the 18th power for the n, and then divide by 1 subtract the common ratio, which is a half. So let's do a little bit of simplifying. This is 1 subtract, we already did 2 to the 18th power, so this is 1 divided by 262,144. And then that's divided by 1 subtract a half is a half. And if you calculate this, it'll be approximately 1.9999923371. So this partial sum for the first 18 terms is extremely close to 2. So S sub 18 is approximately 2. So this gives you an idea of how to calculate the partial sum of geometric sequence terms. Now, some of the homework problems in the previous section involved situations that involve salaries. If you remember from the previous video, we were talking about um, you were given a constant amount of raise each year. So we were increasing the salaries by a fixed amount every single year.
Well, that's not really that realistic. A more common type of raise is a percent raise. So let's say your salary raises by a certain percentage every year. So you have a 1% raise or a 3% raise every year rather than a certain definitive amount. So let's try example six. Suppose that the union contract specifies that a, it, each worker will receive a 5% raise to their salary every year for the next 30 years. So the person's gonna stay at the same company for 30 years until they retire. If the worker is paid $35,000 their first year, what is the person's total lifetime salary if they work for the 30 years? Well, this describes a geometric sequence because you have a constant percentage increase rather than a constant definitive amount increase, an additive amount. So you have a 5% increase, pay increase, each year. So let's calculate the common ratio. So the common ratio is R equals. Now it's not just 5% or 0 0.05 because you want to make sure that the values are increasing from one year to the next. So take one and add in. So this is representing 100%. You're taking your 100% of your salary and adding in another 5%. So 0 0.05. So the common ratio is 1.05. And we also need to know the first term. The first term corresponds to A sub 1, which is your starting salary, $35,000. So now we're going to add up for the total lifetime salary. We need the formula for the partial sum of the first n terms of a geometric sequence. A sub 1 times 1 minus R to the n. And then again, divide by 1, subtract R. So we are trying to find out the sum of the 30-year period of salaries. So we are looking at capital S sub 30. So this is equal to, the first term is $35,000 times 1 subtract, the common ratio was 1.05. This 1.05 is the base, and it's raised to the 30th power because we're trying to add up the first 30 terms. And then take this and divide by 1 subtract the common ratio again, which is 1 subtract 1.05. Now, if you calculate this, it's approximately equal to 2,325,359 dollars, and don't forget about the cents, 66 cents. And this is the sum of all the salaries, total salaries, over a 30-year period. When you're given a 5% increase every year for 30 years in a row. So the lifetime salary for this person would be over $2 million. All right, let's look at the next idea, which is called annuities. Annuities come up in finance and business and accounting problems very often. So we've talked about compound interest earlier in the course when we were talking about exponential functions. Well, remember that there was a formula A equals P times 1 plus R to the T exponent. This was representing the compound interest if you're calculating the interest or compounding the interest one time a year. So annual compound interest. The P was the principal. The R was the interest rate represented as a decimal, and T was always in years. And the A stood for the amount. Well, we're going to call A this time the future value, because this is talking about annuity, so this is like retirements. You have T years, and you have a fixed amount of money, P, that is deposited into an account that pays annual interest rate R. And R has to be represented as a decimal. Okay. However, money is often invested in smaller amounts at periodic intervals, exactly like retirement accounts. You are contributing to your retirement account every month or twice a month, and that's the typical amount. So here's a very common example. 
you are saving for your retirement, you might decide to put $1,000 into your individual retirement account or an IRA at the end of every year until you retire. We're going to see what would the formula be for this type of individual retirement account. So let's talk about annuities. An annuity is a sequence of equal payments that are made in equal time periods. So for the following formula, we're going to have the value of an annuity for T years and the interest is compounded just one time a year. So this is called the value of an annuity. The interest is compounded n times a year. So this could be compounded quarterly, monthly, semi-annually, and so on. P is the amount that you deposit, or the principal. So it's the amount of the payment that you're depositing every compounding period for an annuity at an R interest rate, represented as a percent, annual interest rate, compounded n times a year. The value is A, and it's standing for the future value after T years. So this is a very complicated formula. You have the payment, or the principal, times the quantity, 1 plus the interest rate divided by the compounding periods, to the nt exponent, so the number of compounding periods over the entire time in years, subtract 1, and then you divide by r divided by n again. So let's try example 7. Suppose that you are 25 years old and you decide to start saving for your retirement by depositing $200 every month at the end of the month into your individual retirement account or an IRA. That gives you a very nice interest rate of 7.5%. That's not very typical today. And the interest is compounded monthly. How much will you have in your individual retirement account when you retire at the age of 65? And also determine the amount of interest that you earned from the individual retirement accounts over that same time period. All right, so we're going to be making use of this formula. It's P times the quantity, 1 plus R divided by N to the NT exponent, subtract 1, and then that's all divided by R divided by N. All right, so we need to fill in what we know. The payments or the principal that we're adding into the retirement account is $200 at the end of every month. So $200 payments. We also need to know what N is. N is the number of times the interest is compounded a year. Well, the interest is compounded monthly. So 12 compounding periods a year. We need to know what T is. T is the amount of time for the individual retirement account. Well, we're retiring when we are 65 years old, and we started the account when we were 25. So we were saving for 40 years of making $200 payments every month for 40 consecutive years. And we also need to know what the interest rate is, which is 7.5%, which is 0.075 as a decimal. So if you substitute everything in into the formula, you'll have A equals 200 times 1 plus the interest rate is 0 0.075 divided by 12 because the interest rate is compounded 12 times a year raised to the 12 times 40 exponent. So that means there's 480 payments that you're making over the 40 years. Subtract 1 and then this entire numerator is divided by the interest rate again, divided by 12. So let's try typing this into the calculator just to get some practice. So type in 200. The square brackets are really parentheses, so they're just grouping symbols. So parentheses and then another parentheses. 1 plus 0 0.075 divided by 12, close parentheses raised to the exponent, 
12 times 40, so 12 parentheses 40 parentheses. Get your minus 1 out of the exponent, so subtract 1, and then close parentheses again. And then divide by another set of parentheses for around the denominator, 0 0.075 divided by 12. And then again, close parentheses. So this will tell us the amount in the individual retirement account when we retire. It comes out to be just $604,764.43. So always round your answer to two decimal places when you're dealing with money. It's $604,764.43. This will be in the IRA when you retire. at 65 years old. So if you save $200 every month and you place it into this IRA with this extremely high interest rate, compounded monthly, you'll have this much to retire on in 40 years. So now the second part of the question is, determine the amount of interest that was earned at the same time period. So this amount is including interest and the amount that you contribute yourself. So we just want to know what the interest is. So let's find out how much we contributed into our IRA. The amount paid into the account is $200. We made this payment 12 times a year for 40 years. Well, that is $96,000 over 40 years. Well, that seems like a huge amount of money, but keep in mind that we are putting money into the account and there's also interest accruing on the outstanding balance. Well, the rest of it is purely interest. So the amount of interest earned during the 40 years is $604,764.43 subtract $96,000. So the amount of money is our 96,000 and the rest is interest. And that amount of interest is five hundred and eight thousand seven hundred and sixty four dollars and forty three cents and that is the interest so like i said the interest rate is extremely high and that's why we are accruing a huge amount of interest for this ira so this finishes of our discussion on finding the sum of the first n terms in a geometric sequence and also applications involving annuities if you have any questions about any of the examples that we talked about please let me know or if you have any questions while you work on the homework for this section, please let me know that as well. And this is the last video in our series.